Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Listeners, it is super hot in Portland. It's been like 100 degrees for the last couple of days. It's been super gross all weekend long. And to top it off, Thursday night, when I would normally be editing the podcast and getting it all ready to go, I stepped off a curb too hard and I sprained my ankle and tore my plantar's fascia. And I've been in a big, sweaty, disgusting boot all weekend long, hobbling all over the place. I would call it Swamp Boot. You do not want to know what that entails. Uh, anyway, let's see. Beginning of the show announcements. First and foremost, uh, we mentioned my friend towards the end of this episode, uh, Corinne Gale. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to take a moment to dedicate this episode to her uh, because... I wanted her to be here to talk to me about this stuff, and I dragged my feet, and I never invited her to do so. I just figured, you know what, when it came up, it would come up, and then I found out a few weeks ago that Miss Corinne passed away, and she was a pretty sweet lady, and she was a wonderful artist, and you will be very, very missed, Miss Corinne. And I just want to remind listeners to... Reach out and talk to people when you miss them and let let them know how much you care about them while they're here because sometimes really awful things happen and people leave you unexpectedly. Whew. Okay, uh, getting to the show announcements. You can uh, find this episode and all other episodes and all of our show notes Anything that we mention or talk about or links that we say are going to be up will be on our website, twoartsygals.com. Uh, you will also find there uh, links with uh, ways for you to support the show. So you can donate money to the show through PayPal. Um, you can also purchase gifts for the show uh, that will allow us to test products that we want to talk about and do episodes about and experiment with them. Um, we have our Am- a link to the Amazon wish list app. If you, if you click the wish list button, it will take you right to that. And then it will send it right to us. That's just ways to help us kind of... Uh, keep the show going because we pay for it out of our own pockets and it's a free podcast. And so, you know, sometimes it gets a little expensive. You can call us, uh, at 503-395-7190 and leave a message or email us at twoartsygals.com with any questions or comments that you have about this episode or any other episode ever or just the show in general. Uh, we love to hear your voices. We love to get email from you and we love to be able to share with our listeners when people have something cool to share or talk about. Follow us on all the social medias. I've really been making an effort to tweet some stuff lately because I have not been using Twitter. I go through phases. So we're on Twitter. We are on Instagram. We are on the Facebooks and we are on Pinterest and under all of those accounts, you can find us at Two Artsy Gals. You can um, subscribe to this podcast through iTunes, um, through Stitcher, uh, through any of the many apps that I don't know about that you can stream podcasts through. And you can also use the new Podomatic app. Uh, using the Podomatic app will actually allow you to access uh, lots of other really cool Podomatic podcasts, um, which is where we host our show. So anyway... Uh, we're talking about mold making. Things get a little bit crazy in this episode. There's a lot of ranting about traffic in the beginning. I'm not sure why. I think we were crabby. So, uh, 
we hope you enjoy the show. Oh, and don't forget to submit questions, submit questions about um, your mixed media troubleshooting issues because we're going to try to do an episode about that and we would love to answer questions for you. So- hey, everybody. This is Katie. And this is Lonnie. And you're listening to Two Arts Gals. Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh, Lonnie and I are so low energy and tired today. I know. Dude. I felt like I was going to apologize to the listeners because I get cranky in traffic. No, no apologies. You're not cranky now. Okay, good. If you're like coming up in here and being cranky, I'm going to be like, <laughs> bitch, please. You should have heard me. I was like, oh, really? No, just go ahead. Get right there in front of me. Yeah. Oh, please. Slow down some more. We don't want to go the speed limit. Oh, uh, one of those mornings. Yeah. I just long for the days where I could go... I could leave my house at 1030 and just drive to Portland going the speed limit with no worries. I know. It's becoming quite a situation. It's very much so. Look, people, we don't have enough roads for you, so quit no. fucking moving here. Yeah, I just... Like, I hate to be one of those dicky people, but... Yeah, I... No. More. No. We're maximum capacity. It, You're driving up the prices of our houses. I can't afford to buy a fucking house. And at least if they're going to move here, can they please drive better? Yeah, quit driving like a dickhead. Like, yeah, that'd be cool. You know? I would appreciate that. I just think that it's so many cars on the road. Although the other day, where was I going with my son? We were going somewhere. And, like, traffic was so backed up on Barber that I thought there was an accident. Because I'm like, why is traffic? Because it was like the middle of the day. It shouldn't have been. Yeah, it's like, no, we anymore. all had to stop and look at someone getting pulled over. <sighs> I'm not a rubbernecker. I don't do that. I learned my lesson about that when I was a very, very young. Because I was with my friend and her dad was driving and we were driving on 26, leaving town because we, mm-hmm. we had been out here for a concert. We we're going back to the coast and her dad said girls don't look out the window but it was too late because we were already looking and there was a bloody car seat laying in the road with glass and like oh, twisted metal all around it man. and i felt sick and wanted to throw up so you yeah. know what i don't rubberneck because a i don't want to see that shit yeah i don't want to see something's gonna make me sad and i don't actually like if you've ever been broken down on the side of the road how fucking stupid does it make you feel when people stare at you Right. Like, so I, I don't like that. So I just force myself to keep looking forward. So everybody else in the world, you should do that too. Well, I was, you know, you end up slowing down because everybody else is. So you might as well. Look and then you this. look, right? <laughs> but I don't. I refuse to. It's a thing. I did rubberneck when there was a car on fire on the freeway, like a few weeks ago. Well, it's a fire. Yeah. It was pretty exciting. You're like, fire. fire. Oh, the whole minivan was like in flames. We had a car catch on fire in front of our house once. Like Ugh. these guys pulled over and they did not speak English. Oh no. And so they ran to our door and like were, tr- they were motioning for like water and a bucket. And I'm like, dude, you need to stay away from that car. Like yeah, it was you need a, a fire fully in glow. No, it was beyond that. Oh. Like it was yeah. engulfed in flames. And they wanted our garbage can. We had an empty garbage can. They started pulling down the side of the house with the hose. And I'm like, no, like, first of all, you're not going to be able to lift that garbage can once it's full of water. <laughs> That's impossible. Like, it was a giant <laughs> fucking. Rock! Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. we kept trying to go like I'm on the phone with 911. And I'm like, look, they keep running over there trying to like put like this guy's pouring a fucking pop on it. And she's like, tell them to get away. And I'm like. I'm trying to, and we're like, boom, boom. We're like trying to say, look, your car could fucking explode. Get away from it. And I start dancing. Boom, boom. No, (laughs) the tire, no, all four tires blew one right after the other, and it scared the shit out of them. So then they came up on our porch, and we're like, yeah, come up here. And then the cops came and put it out. But you know what? What? Those guys came back like a half an hour later after, after like the, the, they put out the fire and after the tow truck took their car away. And they came back and swept up all the debris off the street. Aww. They were so nice. That's gave, great. They gave them cookies because they were being nice. Yeah. And I just made some cookies. So I thought they deserve a cookie. Wow. That's. Plus their work truck just burnt up. So. Yeah. Maybe that's their way of like mourning or whatever. Their no, way no, of they, grieving. No, they were, I think that they just really didn't want to leave like a mess for. Like, people to get their tires popped on or something. They were being very conscientious. That's 
Awesome. Speaking of car stuff, that's why I'm a little low energy today because I was up all night because someone had car trouble across the street from us. And my dog had to tell me about it all oh, night long. Oh, boy. Yeah. Every time they tried something new with the car, <laughs> the dog was like, hey, hey, like hey, check this out. <laughs> look what they're doing stuff now. He's opening the door again. Oh, my God. He's moving. <laughs> oh, my God, Mom. Look what he's doing. He's doing it. <laughs> and like I just fall asleep and you're like, hey, 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 he's doing something else again. What are we, look what he's doing over there now. And I'm like, uh, stop it. The cat even got tired of him and left the room. Oh. She got so grumpy with him, she bit my foot. And I'm like, I have no control over this, you jerk. Well, get out of here. Wow. She went downstairs. We were all grumpy. <laughs> I've been having super intense dreams lately. <gasps> Me too. What the fuck is up with I that? Don't know. They're cool though. Oh, They're... mine are weird. Oh yeah, mine are not weird, always but cool. Cool. Scott was taking us on this cruise, and so we'd be like in the ocean, and it was like we had to fly, and it was so weird because we'd fly almost like into the next ship, and then I am so very confused. It was by really it was weird. Very strange. It, in my dream, it was really cool. And it, it was the fastest cruise ever because we were like cruising and then flying and then cru- I don't know. I that like, would be awesome. Whoa. Yeah. Dude, have you seen the new giant cruise ship thing that they made? It has like 16 swimming pools and like three casinos and like it's a city on the ocean. And I, for one, have questions about the safety of a vessel that large on the sea. Yeah. With that many people in it and that top heavy, because you look at it and you're like, that motherfucker is going to hit some waves and tip the fuck over. Weird. Like, well, like those giant container ships? Is no, it like... I don't, yeah, no, it's bigger than that. It's oh, huge. It's like whoa. giant. It's the world's largest. It was like a billion zillions to make. It's ridiculous. Like, I would not go on it. Who is, where is it? It was in Europe somewhere. They oh, did it. If weird. you look up the largest, okay. world's largest Obnoxious. cruise ship, it is insane. Like, I went on a cruise once. My in-laws took Turd us spear. on a cruise of the Mexican Riviera. <laughs> it was nice, but I got to tell you, it freaked me out. Yeah. Like, the knowledge that I was at sea, and if anything happened, probably in my dream, would I was kind of having those moments where yeah. I was like, I was seeing the ocean and i was like this feels i mean weird. one like, minute you're like feeling. this is fucking awesome look at that they're flying fish flying beside us and there are dolphins swimming in our wake like having a good old time and then you're like oh my fuck i hope one of those dolphins would save my life yeah if we and then i had this weird thing where i was like i didn't want to sleep one night i couldn't sleep so i got up and walked around and i still smoked cigarettes then so i went out on the deck and smoked a cigarette and the ocean was like, I went up by the rail because it looked really pretty at night because mm-hmm. the moon is so bright and the stars are so bright out in the middle of the goddamn Pacific Ocean. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think we were still in the Sea of Cortez then. But here's the thing. I started getting this weird fear that I was going to jump over the edge. Oh, wow. Like this phobia level fear that I was going to jump over the edge. Uh-huh. And so I couldn't stand that close to it anymore <laughs> it only happened at night maybe the mermaids were singing me a song trying to convince me to yeah jump over i don't know it freaks me out have i have seen, this i yeah have you seen chris hardwick's uh comedy special no oh my god he makes a joke about that that's so funny really Cause just I being I his fear him. of heights is a lot of it is that he's gonna jump Yes, I have the same fear about walking yeah. over the bridges in Portland. Like, yeah. if you're not from Portland, we are also known as Bridge City because, wait, how many are there? Don't you fucking start barking. There's <laughs> the Selwood Bridge, the Ross Island Bridge, Fremont. No, mm-hmm. wait, that's a, and then Markham. Markham, Hawthorne. I feel like I missed one between the Markham Morrison. and Hawthorne. Morrison. Then there's the new one that's only for public transportation and Telecom. pedestrians, the Telecom Bridge. Then there's the Burnside Bridge, the Steel Bridge, Broadway, Broadway Bridge, and St. John's. John's Bridge. I yeah. think that those are all the bridges in the city of Portland, like the city limits. Wait, did we count the one that goes over to Washington? Oh, I-5, I-5, I-5. Yeah. So there's like 12 bridges. Like we have bridges everywhere. And... 
it's really crazy. Now we're like panicked trying to build and like fix all our bridges so they don't fucking fall the fuck down in an earthquake. I know. We would be isolated I on our sides think, of the river. I, know. I used to think about that when Scott and I were dating and he lived on the other side of the Ross Island Bridge. And I'm like, if there's an earthquake, we won't be able to see. I'm each pretty other. sure we could just like get a boat. It's true. Get the river's not that big. Taxi. Yeah, that's true. And I'm pretty sure, you know, we have the <laughs> entrepreneurial I can't say that word spirit in Portland. I'm pretty sure the same dickwads that are in the parking lots of concerts with coolers on skateboards selling beer are going to find boats and become water taxis. Yeah, so. that's true. That's It'll happen. True. Yeah. <laughs> when my friend Ryan moved here, um, or we met him, he was from Arizona. And one night we decided Hi, we were all going to do um, LSD. We did LSD, and then we were going to coming Weird, to Portland to go and I dancing. Just had a conversation about that, but. and uh, he was like, "We're always on the bridge." It was so funny. He's like, "Are we ever on land?" You just like- made me almost blow really <laughs> spicy tea out my nose. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's like, help! It was so. We were like, "It's okay." We were just cracking up because. I didn't even. No, it, it you didn't don't occur think about to it because you until, live here. So, because yeah, even on like a lot of the freeways, you're on an overpass. A lot of times, yeah, you're over you're water. elevated on some kind of yeah pillars that you hope just fucking hold up. Because hold me up, I'm going. Yeah, I don't right. Know. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty amazing. So funny to see someone react to it, though. It just. <sighs> I wonder <laughs> if. We could make new bridges by making molds of the old bridges. Oh, yeah. That was such a shitty segue. Oh, we could make silicone bridges so they just So they'd be all sway. like, burr, burr, burr. Yeah, oh, but then that would make me have like sick tummy driving over it. Okay. That's just, true. It's like bad enough going over the fucking, the Hawthorne Bridge. Oh, God. Because the Hawthorne Bridge is like a metal, like great. great the deck yeah. is a metal grate. And walking so across it is trippy. Walking across it is terrifying. Mm-hmm. Driving across it in the rain. Even not in the rain, but all the rain makes it worse. Because you can feel that you have no traction. Mm-hmm. Like, you can feel it. You yeah. go, oh, we're, yep. we're going to fucking die yep. if I swerve. I rode over the back of that in the dark, in the rain, on the back of a motorcycle once. Oh, dear. And I said... I'm taking a bus home. I will not be doing that ever again. <laughs> yeah. I'm just not adventurous like that. <laughs> I don't feel the need to have adrenaline in that way. No, me neither. I don't like it. I am risk averse. I learned that recently. I'm not when it comes to art stuff. Oh, me neither. I like doing that kind of stuff. But when it comes to like f- physical peril, very much so. I'm yeah. risk averse. Risk averse? Is that what you call it? Risk averse. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I like the sounds of that. Yeah. So I've never made a mold before. I've well, you thought, can take a risk. And I know. Because I thought it would be a cool thing. Okay. So let's start off by talking about why we would want to make a mold in the first place. Like, like a, why would you want to do that? Yeah, why well, let's you? Let's say... <laughs> Good question. You're doing, like, some found object art, and you find this really fucking cool thing, but you don't want to use it and then have it be gone. Like, if you use it in one art piece, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's all you have is the one. Kitty cat, quit taking stuff off my shelves. Look at her. She's It's like she's shopping. <laughs> I'm shutting them in here today and we're trying this, but they're, they're going to be dicks about it. Uh, so mm-hmm. you can make a mold of it so you can make more. Okay. Or let's say you find this really creepy, cool thing, but it's plastic and you don't want to use something plastic or it's made of something like a, a metal and you don't want to use metal or vice versa. Like you can, make a mold of it and then you can create one using clay or resin or whatever else you want to you can make it what you need it nice so or if you have like a really cool piece of jewelry or a really cool trinket or something and again you don't want to lose it 
or, or you know, you don't want to use it once and then have it never be there again. I don't even know what my cat has right now. <laughs> what is she doing? She found a box. Oh, she's getting into my nail stuff, my fingernail stuff. She's going to start chewing a nail file and it's going to sound really horrible. Oh, God. Because my cat chews emery boards. It's the worst sound ever. It goes... <coughs> Your cat is so interesting. You can just say she's a jerk. That's okay. That's interesting. Last time Lonnie was here, was it last week? My cat sat on the couch beside us and stared at us while she ripped a piece, ripped apart a piece of paper. Yeah. Just looking at us my like, cats don't, yeah. this paper is your face in my head. Yeah. That's what I feel like. Yeah. I feel like she's threatening me. It's really interesting. Yeah. My cats don't do that. My cat's a dick. So <laughs> I love her though. But yeah. So anything like that, that you, that you like, you know. Or you only have one of something and you want more of it. Like you want to use, like you're like, oh, this would look really cool if I did this, this, and this. But I'll need more than one. Or I've seen people make really cute epoxy jewelry and they use a mold. Yes. To make their epoxy jewelry. Yes. Anything. That looks fun. Or if you are, now one thing I'll cover is like when you're fixing stuff. Like uh, one thing that you can do is like say you have... I don't know, like a a handle that broke, like to something. Like sometimes, you know, your drawer pulls snap in half. Mm -hmm. You can make a mold of it and then use epoxy or something to create an all new drawer pull. Wow. And then, you know, anything like that. You can use it for repairs. There are numerous reasons that you would make molds of things. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to talk about how to do them. Now, here is the thing. It looks like a lot of steps. It's not a lot of steps. I just have a lot of products out to talk about. So don't worry. You look really stressed. (laughs) No, when I'm going to take a picture of this pile of stuff. So (laughs) when I thought, okay, we're doing an episode on mold making, I'm just going to get out all my molding shit. So Lottie has this look on her face like, what? Yeah, it looks like a big... um, chemistry lab set no up, it's like, just it's like... all the stuff that i use <laughs> and it's all the options that i have like it's not like i would not use all of this stuff in one session okay. of making. there's oh, different man. types different yes. so what have you made molds of well oops i first i'll show you but okay first i want to talk about different because i'm not going to be very good at talking about making molds from plaster so if you're making the, a mold of something that you want to be, like you want to pour in molds where you can, oh, so you can yeah, make a yeah. whole thing. Okay. That I have not done before. Okay. I must confess, full disclosure. Uh, we are going to have a ton of tutorials on the Pinterest board. My internet's down today. So I haven't been able to do, like I got up early this morning and I was going to do some research and start the Pinterest board for this episode so that I could talk about different ways to do it but my internet took crap um it won't be up till like three Uh, my tv's down too bt dubs my tv shut off my phone doesn't work when you have your shit all on comcast Uh cable bundle you lose it all yeah so i did do a little bit of stuff on my phone and i do know a little bit about it so like say you're gonna make a plaster mold Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna briefly touch on that because it's the thing that i don't that I don't personally do, but mm-hmm. I think that it's valuable to know. And it may be a better way to do, to make a mold depending on your situation. Mm-hmm. So for that, what you would do is, as I understand it, and I was able to look at a couple of tutorials with my phone before you got here this morning, but I hate reading. Like I have to, you know, when you're using your phone, you have to make shit bigger. And yeah. Stuff, so. And apparently I'm a grandma and I need new glasses, so. <laughs> no, you should see my, yeah, when I have my Chromebook, like, I like, Meh. it's magnified, yeah. So <laughs> you would take your item, and this is a cool thing to save food containers for. Oh, okay. Because. You save those. Yeah, I can't break my, ha- my habit of it. it. It comes from my grandma <laughs> and my great grandma. Like, it would take you an hour to actually find real butter. In my grandma's refrigerator, because you would have to open up all the containers, the butter containers that have leftovers in them. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, You're my like, chest. Oh, what's that? Yeah. And especially my grandma, my, my grandma Bradley was like that really badly. Like, it's the, I don't even know if they make that brand anymore that she used to have. It's the yellow container. I feel like it starts with an M. It has red, red 
writing on it. It was Wasn't the margarine. It, like, it was like yeah. marigold. Marigold, maybe. yeah. And I think it's golden soft now. Oh, okay. It's still the same now. Yeah. So yeah, she used to have that those containers in her refrigerator, and it would take like she'd be like, oh. I said, Grandma, because I, I used to eat a lot of toast when I was a kid. I'm oh, not sure me about, Grandma, too. can I have some toast? I loved buttered toast. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just had a flashback mm, to that, that cartoon, Ed, Ed, and Nettie. Did your kids watch that <laughs> on Cartoon uh, Network? Yes. I think we were in between. That. August used yeah. to do this, like, no, because your son and my son are. Oh, that yeah. I think my son did watch it a little bit. August yeah. used to go, buttered toast. Like, he was a <laughs> guy. I don't know which, if it was Ed, Ed, or Eddie that said that, but. Um, anyway, I would look through her refrigerator and like, I would take like forever to find actual real butter. <laughs> I'm like, grandma, can you write which one's the butter? <laughs> Even though it said butter or was margarine actually on the thing. And I don't use margarine. So you want a container though to make all this happen in. Okay. And you're going to want a container to make, I've learned over, over the course of, I don't know, six or seven years, uh, that having a container makes a neater mold. Okay. So I would for any of the following (laughs) things that I'm going to talk about, Mm -hmm. you want a container and you want it to be because you don't want to waste your, your agent that you're using to make the mold. Right. Yeah. So you want it to be as small as it can possibly be and still fit your entire object. So you can cover all edges. So you can cover everything, but it won't, you won't be filling this giant thing mm-hmm. to make this mold. <laughs> now you can do like you, a five gallon bucket with yeah. a little tiny kitty toy. No, that in would be terrible. Okay. That would be <laughs> such a gross waste of material. <laughs> yes. Do not agree. I'm done with that dog today. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. He needs a haircut so bad because that's why he's barking so much lately. His hair. He can't fucking see. Yeah. My dog's got hair because he's part poodle. Just in case you don't know that. So for the plaster molds, you now I know people who make plaster molds all the time are going to be like, this is not very detailed or you do this or you do this. So I'm just again going to say I have never made a plaster mold. Mm -hmm. I have done research into it and I decided that the products that I tend to use work better for what I do Mm -hmm. than the plaster mold situation would. Yeah. And it's a little bit what I use is also easier. We're just going to keep talking and pretend that my dog is not in the other room. Barking yeah. His fucking face off. So yeah. I apologize, people. To make a plaster mold. I didn't make that one. I bought that one. <laughs> oh, I was like, wow, it's got little thingies. No, but to make a plaster mold, you're going to want to use like Play-Doh or modeling clay or something. I'll actually throw up a really cheap recipe for salt clay. Like homemade Play-Doh because it works really well for, like, you don't want to buy clay that you're just going to, like, toss out or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's cheaper to just use flour and salt and... Oh, yeah. Like a, yeah, like a salt dough kind of thing. Yeah. So what you'll do is you'll put the salt dough in your container that you've chosen Mm -hmm. and sink whatever it is you're making a mold of halfway. So exactly halfway... And then you're, you, I've seen actually in a lot of tutorials, uh, to make it, uh, you want a release agent for that. And when they're making plaster molds, uh, they use liquid dish soap or hand soap and they just paint a thin layer on the item with oh, their, okay. uh, with a paintbrush. Just so I was it, it releases like easy. Vaseline or something. You could use that too. And I have another one that I'll, I'll talk the about with the silicone stuff, but yeah, dish off. soap or, yeah. yeah. And then, so what you do is you pour your plaster over the top. Now I do know plaster and the silicone stuff that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, if you pour, you need to pour it in from the side very slowly from one corner of the mold because if you just dump it on top you're going to increase Bubble. the likelihood of air bubbles yeah and air bubbles will fuck up your mold yeah. and there's unfortunately no way to tell that you have an air bubble in it until it's until dry. it's dry and you go fuck yeah well that sucks yeah so pour it very slowly from one side until it covers and you want to tap it a little bit on the table just to release any of the bubbles and let it set. So that's going to dry. And then once it does dry, you're going to flip your mold over. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people I've seen cut from the bottom, they cut the bottom out of the container. So 
they fill it with the, I should have said that first, you cut the bottom out and then you fill it with your clay. Because then once you flip it over, you can get the clay out and you're not unmolding it. Because you want, oh, okay. so you want to uncover the other half. Of the item. So you flipped it over and now you take the clay out and you kind of clean up around it with a little brush because now the one half of your item is sealed in the plaster and you release the other side and then you will clean it up, paint a little bit of the soap on it as your release agent and then you'll mix another batch of plaster and pour that plaster on the other half. Okay. To the top. And again, you're filling from one side very slowly, very carefully, tapping it along the way to make sure that you aren't having any bubbles. And you also, when you're doing this, you also want to uh, cover the plaster surface with a little bit of soap as well, because you want that mold to be able to come and to come apart. Yeah. Um, one thing to note, if you're not using an item that actually goes from end to end, you will want to put like, uh, tape some straws together or something and make a hole in which you can pour whatever you're using. If you're using, if you're making a pour mold Mm -hmm. and not a mold that comes open, you want to be able to to pour stuff in there. So you're going to yeah. have to use like something to clear the hole when you pour the plaster in. Okay. Yeah. So then you so have mold around that. Yeah. So either you have a mold with two halves that you can sandwich the clay stuff in, mm-hmm. or you have a mold that you can pour either way. It has to come open. Yeah. So you, you want that soap. And then once that happens and then you release, you know, once it's all dry, you, you, take it out of the container and you open it up and you take your thing that you made a mold of out and you clean it up and brush it. And there you have it, a plaster mold. Cool. And those last quite a while. I think the plaster eventually chips and breaks. You have to be careful with them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I know about plaster mold making. And I felt like I needed to mention it. Is that what they use for ceramics? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. And there are different ways to do it. There are different ways to fill them. Again, that is not what I do. Yeah. I I don't don't know that much about it. So I don't feel like I can talk about. uh, Yeah. Because I'm fascinated by that now that come to think of it. Mm Because then you can fire it. So you mm-hmm. pour your magic ceramic well, stuff in there. Well, I know they pour, like, the slurry in it and, and, like, move it around so it makes a really thin layer and it dries yeah. like that. And then they release the mold, like. And then they fire it. Yeah. Or, yeah, I don't even I know. I don't work in ceramics. I don't either. So it's I, really I, cool. All I know I, about it, I've seen on that show how it's made. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I have trouble. I think we've already established that. I have trouble staying awake when I watch that show. As much as I love it, the guy's voice. Yeah. Is like a sweet, sweet Canadian song. It is. And it makes me get all sleepy and stuff. I feel like I'm really far away from my microphone today. Chick, chick, chick. I don't know. <laughs> I am too. I was being cooler than I am just now. <laughs> so we're going to talk about what I use. So there are two different products that I use. Okay. The cool thing about the products that I use is that they are food grade. So you make candy. So you can make candy out of it. You can make ice cubes. You can do whatever. Also, you can use the products that I use, but it's non-toxic. It's not going to hurt you. It's odorless. It doesn't like stink up the room. Oh, nice. Uh, There are a lot of other products that you can use for making silicone molds. Uh, These are the most affordable I have found. Okay. There are some that maybe work a little bit better than than this, but I've never had a problem with these. Um, So these are what I recommend. And the brand is... They're called Easy Mold, so I think Easy Mold is the brand. Mm-hmm, oh, absolutely. Cast and Craft is the brand. That's oh, okay. It. So there are two options. So one is a brushable, pourable. These are always two parts. Okay. So, ew, I'm messy. So <laughs> you, it's a two-part batch. So I recommend when you're doing this, anything you have to use two parts of, Mm-hmm. Uh, I bought a little scale that's like a, a, an old Weight Watcher scale. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not even a digital one. It's just a little food scale that I, I found at a garage sale for like a buck. And that's what I use to measure out. I, f- I find that when, especially when you're using stuff like silicone molds, you really want to be exactly two halves. Okay. I think that it, by weight, 
is a little bit more accurate than by like a measuring cup. Well, yeah. And then your measuring cup gets all messed up and you can't exactly. get it all out. You're yeah. just pouring it into the container that you're mixing it in. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it will ruin a container. That's something to know about yeah. the, the, the liquid, the pourable. It kind of dries in the container and gets really gross. I have a bunch of coffee stir sticks around that I use to stir this shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just use disposable little throwaway containers. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. It makes yeah. my husband unendingly annoyed that I save food containers, but I always use them for things. Yeah. So no, I have, I have. I don't think Scott's gotten annoyed yet, but I try Kirk to keep him. gets really irritated, but I try to keep them hidden in my yeah, studio. Yeah, tuck so. them away. Yeah. So this stuff. Because another like, thing, like chopsticks would be handy for the stirring too. Well, like see, and that's just it. Chopsticks. Kurt tells me it's stealing that when I take, like, take extra chopsticks when we go somewhere <laughs> or I take extra coffee stir sticks. But this shit is actually going bad because it's oh, so old. Yeah, it's almost so gone. So it doesn't really gone. pour anymore. Yeah. But I, I kept the container i need to get more and you'll see that's what's happened in this i actually have used more of one than the other oh, i yeah. had a bad batch this doesn't pour anymore it does go bad so i would get the smaller containers of it like i have you can buy it in like the big gallon jugs but unless Only you're, you're going to be molds. making huge molds or you're going to be making a lot of molds don't waste your money because it does go bad for a custom mask or a custom um you know like in costuming or in make cause i I think that they use uh they'll make a mold sometimes yeah i think that they probably have a little bit different stuff that they use but i'm not sure um i know the process of taking the mold of your face is a little bit different because they use a lot of gauze and plaster and Mm -hmm. And so I'm not really sure about mask making. Okay. I, whenever I see someone have that done, like when they stick the little straws Ooh, up their nose or whatever, I know, I would be freaking out. It makes out. me so claustrophobic that I, I like actually my feet sweat watching that shit. Yeah. And I'm I can't glad I'm not fucking an take it. Actor. Yeah. No, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't. So there's that. And now with the pourable stuff, I think that it works really well with, um, well, I don't, I think, you kind of have to judge some stuff. I think with the more detail, I like to use. God damn it. I got this shit on my fucking hand. And I don't have a towel to wipe it off with. But um, I think stuff with more. Okay. Like I have some stuff that I actually poured versus pressed. So a while back, I made a bunch of journals yeah. with the stuff on the front of them. And these are the masters to the... Um, the skull what and are the these heart. Made out of? This is two part epoxy resin clay. Oh. Um, but uh, my crow broke because it was so thin. But because these are thin and they have a lot of detail mm-hmm. that I wanted to pick up, I super glued or I hot glued these to the bottom of a container of my plastic container, and I used the pour the silicone the two part silicone oh, okay. to pour over the top of it mm-hmm. because I felt like that picked up more detail mm-hmm. and it was easier to deal with because these are a little bit bigger than what I would use the uh, putty for. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I want to take a picture of those really quick just so, to put them up on the, on our blog. So I would say anything that is more sizable or detailed, I would use the pour mold versus these are actually say, okay, wait, one's a master and one's, this is the master that I made. I actually took a mold of a glass cabochon setting and mm-hmm. then this is for a skull cameo that I, I used to make skull cameos and sell them. Did I yeah. give you one? Yes. I think I did. So this is the master. I made a mold of the, of a, just a plain cabochon and then I built up the skull on top of it. Then I took a mold of this. So I used the silicone putty instead of the pour because if, and I think that there were molds for this in there. Yeah. And this was the first time I ever made molds and I do it differently. Now I was just pushing it into oh yeah the mold like this, which you can do. You can just make a ball of it and push it in there. But what happens is 
if you'll notice, these are kind of concaved in the back because oh. there's not enough around the mold versus the, a mold that I bought. If you look at the mold that I purchased. Ah, okay. And how much differently that comes out. Ooh, cool. This is where I learned my lesson about using a container to make some sub, some body around the mold because yeah. you need structure around the mold because when you're pushing your clay into it or whatever, you're pouring whatever you want into it, you don't want it to have too much give because then it distorts the shape, the end shape of what your, your positive from your negative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that is definitely my recommendation is to, and I've learned like through if you trial had a and small error. small cup or Yeah, container this was to... probably like a little plastic cup. Mm -hmm. When you're using the pour, the, the two part pourable silicone, you're going to do the same thing you did with which are these? Plaster, basically. Yes. Those mm -hmm. are, those came out. And actually, I'll take pictures of all of this for you guys. Um, actually, let me take a picture of the heart one if you want to just hold it up. You would affix the, I use, um, uh, hot glue to affix when I'm doing the pourable in the bottom of my container so that it doesn't get underneath it. Because oh, you don't, because yeah, yeah. you don't want it to wrap around. And then ultimately what you would do is, you want to paint, you want to brush some silicone over your item that's in there with a, with a paintbrush to get a nice base coat over it and make sure that it's not going under, that everything is filled that Before you want. Before you put it in there? And then pour the rest over the top of it. Okay. So that helps prevent. Like on the face of it? Or just on the back of it? On the, on what you're covering, like what oh, you're okay. molding. You want to brush a layer over it first and then pour the rest around it. Yeah. Um, with the putty, I recommend the putty for anything that's like, like jewelry or a little filigree things that you really, and they're small items. You would mix the, and this is actually a brand new contain, almost brand new containers of the putty. Oh, cool. So you can see it's also two parts. Um, and in this brand, in the casting craft, the pourable is blue and the putty is purple. So you would mix by weight two parts. And this is actually a little easier to clean up too because it's putty. It doesn't get as sticky. It doesn't stick to a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. It just, you knead it and kind of make it like a clay and you knead it until it is completely combined. And the heat from kneading it also helps it set faster. So you have less time to work with the putty than you have to work with oh, the pourable. Okay. So actually, if time is an issue and it's something that's small, you I would use the putty also. Mm -hmm. You do the putty just a little bit differently, though. You would fill your container. And this the putty also works best for stuff that you're like making flat backs. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want, it's not like a, a three, like a dimensional. Yeah. Okay. Like, like you're doing cameos or cabochons or things that you want the back to be flat on, like jewelry and stuff like that. Uh, and we, you can make two part molds kind of in the same way that you made, you made them with, uh, the plaster by sinking half of it, let it setting up, letting it set up and then doing the other half. Oh, okay. In the same way. But, I feel like this, because it's a little bit more flexible. Yeah, it would be hard. May not to... work. It may not line up quite as. Yeah. The way, in the way you want it to. Um, but you, for the flat backs that I use this for, I would fill my small container with the clay and kind of push it down, the putty and push it down and then set my object in it. Push my object down. Cause you can see like with the, purchased mold mm -hmm. how they've done that uh and then it just makes everything even you will kind of want to rub it and get it even it doesn't have to be perfect and nice looking for your purposes i mean the mold i'll i'll take a picture of this too the, the purchase mold that i use they want to make it look really nice because they're they're selling, selling it. it yeah so it doesn't have to be that way with what you're doing just as long as it works for you and it picks up the important part is it picks up the details that you want it to mm -hmm. and like i said i learned from through trial and error that you want the container to give 
a little bit of structure to your mold when yeah. you're pushing. So there's no slippage and there's no movement when you're making the mold. And also there's no stretching or distorting when you're putting what you're using into the mold to make yeah. your copy of what you're doing. So there's that. And I think, do you have any questions about mold make? Any, any, any questions about what I've talked about so far before I go on to other things about it? No, these are cool. Yeah. And again, the stuff that I prefer, and I know there are other brands out there. There are probably other brands that other people prefer, but because it's non-toxic, because it doesn't make a stinky stink and it's affordable. Oh, I can't get this thing out of here. I prefer Casting Craft Easy Mold is the brand. And I use both the pourable and the putty, both of its two part, both of it you mix by weight. Again, I can't stress enough by weight. Yeah. Because if you're a little bit off, you're going to end up with like either a tacky mold or a mold that's too dry and it's not going to make the copies of items that you want it to do, to make. Could you, so with like the putty stuff, could you weigh it out on like a parchment paper and then mix it together? Or do you have to mix? No, yeah, that's, I weigh one into... piece at a time. I make little oh, okay. balls and weigh the balls. Yeah, I should have said that. Okay. She makes balls. I make balls, yo. <laughs> and I roll them in my hands. <laughs> Can we there weigh your balls? It. There do you they have both it. weigh the same? So sometimes now I'm going to talk about stuff that you can pour in these molds. And sometimes I said you want a mold releasing agent. Some people use vegetable oil. Some people use uh, KY like, jelly. Like just kidding. Vaseline's <laughs> or lubricants. Here's the thing with that stuff. You never know how that is going to interact with the agent that you're using to make your copy. Mm-hmm. So I cast and craft actually makes a mold release conditioner. Oh, well, that I use makes that. it easy. You yeah. spray it. It's a spray. You spray it in. Yeah, I like that. Because then you know that it's going to work with their yeah, product. You know it's n- and you know mm-hmm. it's not going to fuck up whatever you are using. I bet this is silicone, isn't it? Probably. I have some. A big jug of it I was going to use for something. And Well, I have had, like, I've, I used to use olive oil sometimes. Because when I use... So... The first things and the things that I actually showed Lonnie and that I took pictures of, I used Aves epoxy resin clays to make my jewelry molds um, or to make the cabochons and all that stuff. It doesn't say. That works fine with olive oil. Mm-hmm. But if you're using like, uh, if you are going to be using resin, like you're casting clear resins or colored resins like the epoxy the clear epoxy resins mm-hmm. like if you're going to be making jewels and stuff i've been wanting to do that but i okay. never have i'm that intimidated you need to use this this the release, release agent because yeah. that reacts very badly with oils and it will make you have a oh yeah like a pitted weird surface yeah. not a shiny surface it'll be like I don't know. It's a very strange reaction. Okay. So that makes sense. And yeah. I had the sads because yeah. I made something once and I was like, oh, oh, I ruined it. Yeah. Um, so you can use, now I actually recommend, I love the shit out of this, the Aves two part epoxy resin clays. A lot of artists use it. Fix it. I have an allergic reaction to you over time. I have learned like I break out in a rash when I use it. And actually, oh. this is so old, I don't think that it's good anymore. Um, I wrote the company on their website. I contacted them. They were super fucking nice. I was like, this is happening, especially when I sand this and I'm using gloves and I'm using face protection. I get a really horrible rash around my mouth. I've actually talked to an, a couple other artists that use this all the time that have the same reaction to it. Hmm. Um, so... And I think I spoke about this in our clay episode. I talked about these resin clays that I love so much. But so the fix it doesn't actually, I don't use fix it anymore unless I'm using small amounts of it and I'm not sanding it and I use it to adhere stuff. Mm, okay. So, but I just want to, if you don't have sensitive skin, this might be your product. Uh, it is a permanent self-hardening waterproof two-part epoxy resin clay. 
the shit wow. you cannot fucking break. Wow. It is tough as nails. Um, it comes in white. It comes in, in a few different colors. Um, it's a multimedia repair compound is what they, they call it. But all of the little skull cameos that I originally made in my first run were made of this stuff. Oh. And it works awesome. It's very durable. So I, and that's why I like this. Like if you're wanting to make a mold of something that's fragile, like something that's made out of ceramic and then make a tough, make one that won't break mm-hmm. to use it for your art or whatever. This is the way to go. Also another really great option. And this is the option that they told me about because it has less of the epoxy and more clay. It's a different mixture is just Aves epoxy clay. And it is also a permanent self-hardening, waterproof, two-part epoxy resin clay. So that um, when you, you told them about your allergic reaction, they said, this "Why is don't what you try this?" It. And they actually sent me a sample. Oh my god! And I liked it better, and I didn't have the reaction that I had with the fix it. So I, this is what I tend to use now. Oh. And again, it's a very durable product, and the reason that you use olive oil with it, a lot of my artist friends recommended conditioning your hands with olive oil because it's kind of sticky and tacky mm-hmm. and also it kind of puts a protective layer over your skin mm-hmm. uh, when you're doing or this. would you wear gloves yeah but you're going to need to grease your gloves with olive oil yeah. too because it'll stick and you gloves. don't want to use lotions unless it's like a just a really pure like maybe coconut oil or something like that yeah but um because you don't want you want it to be like a food oil because you don't want the lotions to break down yeah. The clay. Uh, but you can use this. You can also use just plain old polymer clays, like Sculpey or, uh, what's the other one? Fimo, anything mm-hmm. like that. You can put in these molds and release your thing and bake them, whatever. Oh, okay. Um, I also have Aves Clay Shea. I wanted to try that. I feel like I'm doing an Aves commercial, but I love this product. Um, <laughs> and, I actually didn't like this though for my purposes. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the finished texture, but you can make this and pour it into your molds. Oh. Um, I think I'm just going to use that for paper mache from now on because I just don't, I didn't, it didn't work for what I wanted it to work for. And this is my big tub of plaster of Paris. <laughs> yes. Uh, you get that at the hardware store. It's fucking cheap as hell. Yeah. It is cheapity cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah. So, and even if you're not using plaster to make molds, you can make plaster, pour liquid plaster into your molds and make something out of plaster. Oh, yeah. True. So, there's that. Is it crumbly, though, and, like, Well, you would have to treat it a little bit differently than you do other stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, it depends on what you're using it for, and it depends entirely on what you want. And then, again, as I told Lonnie, this is my stinky box of stuff because I think it's the colors for like smell this box. Of, I'm scared. It smells just like toxic. Oof. Mm. But um, easy cast again, or actually cast and craft easy cast uh, makes a clear casting epoxy. So, and it's, it's also two part and you mix it and it's liquid and it's non yellowing. And so it won't yellow with age, even though this looks yellow. Mm-hmm. But um, I would again mix it by weight. I ordered on Amazon these little teeny tiny. Oh, uh, like the little what shot are they cups. Are they called? They're measuring cups. They look like the little cups that come with your the cough syrup you give your babies. Yeah, like children's cough syrup, and it has the lines on it. Nice. I use these. To mix this stuff in because I can just throw them away. I think a sleeve of a hundred or more of these. Yeah. A pack of a hundred was like two bucks. Nice. Uh, and you can get, um, oh, that's a different thing. These come with different colors that you mix in to tent oh. the clear resin. And I use pipettes to drip them into my molds. Nice. If I don't want to pour. So you would do this if you were making like if you like last week and the week before we talked about in both situations when we talked about uh transparencies and mm-hmm. using transparencies in jewelry and we also spoke about uh pressed flowers, pressed flowers mm-hmm. and and sealing pressed flowers like in a cabochon 
or something. That's what you would use. Yeah. It'd be really cool. And it would be really pretty and really nifty. I'm still, I don't know why I'm intimidated by that. I've never done well, it. Well, Lonnie, you get over need it. to be fearless about I your art. Know. It's reasonable to be afraid of dying in a fiery, fiery car crash. Um, I do have a book that I want to suggest to people if you're looking for inspirations and ideas. And I actually was hit this morning. I'm going to get a little bit emotional because I just realized this is the first time I've talked about this book on the podcast since my friend who wrote it died. So Corinne passed away. Corinne Gale is a wonderful artist and she unexpectedly passed away a few weeks ago. Um, She wrote a book called Inspired Remnants, Curious Dreams, Mixed Media Projects, and Epoxy Clay. And it specifically talks about using almost all of the products that I spoke about today. Um, And she has a lot of great tips in here about using, uh, about making molds. Cool. And successful ways to get a good copy from your mold um, using these products specifically. So I really recommend, I can't recommend this book enough. Like also if you're just looking for maybe a project with step-by-step instructions that are going to, that are going to give you a little bit more confidence to go rogue on your own Mm -hmm. after you do this. Uh, Yeah. It's full of beautiful ideas and really wonderful tips and pointers. And this is actually Corinne is Corinne taught me all I know about mold making and using these products and, Oh, now I feel all choked up and stuff. <laughs> but And I will say, honestly, guys, talk to your people. Yeah. When you say, God, I should really call this person. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, do it. Because yeah. I hadn't talked to Corinne in a long time. And I kept thinking, I should really call Corinne and see how she's doing. And I should really check in with her. And now I feel really, really shitty and awful that I didn't do that. And now she's gone and I can't. So... Talk to your people, people. Mm-hmm. Do it. Don't just say, oh, I should. Yeah. Make a little time. Pick up the phone. Make contact. But I do recommend Corinne's book. I know you can get it it's on really Amazon. Pretty. Um, It's a great. It, it's just full of all kinds of useful information about mold making. So um, do that. Yeah. Now I want to have the cries. Oh, yeah, it was very unexpected. Uh, she was sick. She had an, a problem with asthma. I don't really know what happened from there, but she checked into the hospital and that was that. <sighs> and it was, so and scary. I got a text from our, our, my friend Alicia, who I met Corinne through. And, and she's like, have you been on Facebook yet this morning? And I'm like, no, why? And she goes, oh, good. Cause I didn't want you to hear about it on Facebook. Oh, that's And the I'm worst. glad that I've she called that me because before. I would have found out about it on Facebook mm-hmm. otherwise. Like, uh, she made cool stuff. She made amazing things. She's was, uh, she was a wonderful artist and she breaks down the steps of making molds, especially well in the books because I think the way that you make a mold determines the end product. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you're not taking the steps to make a mold of something properly, you're not going to have a nice end product and it's going to be a bummer. The chicken lady. Yeah. (laughs) That's another thing that you can make molds of that I meant to point out bones. Okay. And stuff. If you have like little, like if you find a little bird skull in your yard that you want to use in your art, Make a mold of the bird skull so you get to keep your bird skull. Yeah. And then you can make, you know, then you have, you can make multiple copies of well, this. I was wondering about delicate things. Cause like I was just been, I've been playing with rose, dried rose petals, but those are delicate. Like, is it possible to mold something like that? I mean, try it. Yeah. That's true. All you, I mean, just try. Mm hmm. Cause Honestly. I just like the texture and the shape and stuff. Like, you know, and then to be able to repeat that with a more, substantial material would be Mm -hmm. cool yeah yeah i would just try it try the uh try the liquid is what i would recommend Mm -hmm. you want to push that into the putty yeah because the putty is pretty stiff and gives quite a bit of resistance yeah so cool anyway mold making folks yeah that's not so bad for me not being able to finish my research this morning i guess yeah (laughs) (laughs) good job katie 
Well, yay. Um, you know what? I think that I'm going to stop announcing what our next show is because I can never fucking remember when we do this. I know yeah. we have an interview coming up pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Um, we're talking about mold making to. Oh, I was wondering about how we were going to do this, but um, how to troubleshoot your mixed media. Oh, yes. We do want to do. Uh, we're going to cool. do an episode about troubleshooting your mixed media. I'm going to put a shout out on our Facebook page and I'll probably tweet a little about it. Um, if you guys have questions, uh, things that you want to know, like, hey, this happened. What do I do? Or what if I want to use this with this? We will answer your questions to the best of our abilities. Cool. So that's next week. You can call our number. You can email us. All that information is always at the beginning of the show now um, because we forget shit when we do it at the end of the show. So I just record it and tack it onto the front. But yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about next week. We're going to troubleshoot some mixed media problems, man. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So until next week, go make some cool shit, yo. Do it now. Mold your shit, man. Oh, I'm going to go make one. (laughs) Good morning, Katie. This is your friend. I'm recording on the new test cam. I'm trying to figure out what the buttons do. But every once in a while, I take a break to poo.